Oh, so I'm on vacation, and it suddenly occurs to me, I spent almost all of my life on this, this spinning rock, and I've never yet measured how big it is. But I don't want to spend a lot of money or time, so let's see if I can do it in, say, less than a day and for less than $100 to measure the size of the Earth. Something that might make all of the Flat Earthers cry that you can do it so easily and so cheaply. Can it be done? Well, let's see. Imagine you're on vacation in America and you can visit two points north-south like that. And you can also measure a point at infinity like, say, for instance, the, the Pole Star. And imagine... You've done that at your two locations. After that, it's just a simple bit of geometry to get the size of the Earth. Cost of measuring the Earth. Let's see, a $6 bubble level, some $3 Crayola markers, and a ultra-strong trifold foam board for about $10 from Walmart, a $7 protractor from Staples, a $10 laser pointer from eBay, and about $50 of gas money. That's not a speculative list. That's exactly what I used, some $85. Now, bear in mind, I'm doing this for the first time. And when you're doing things for the first time, it doesn't always quite go as planned. By which I mean on the day and night that I was going to make the first measurement, a giant thunderstorm rolled in. So do you think this is going to put a crimp on my measurements? Good. So we have our laser spot just there. And if we zoom out to our Earth, we're going to be on the equator. So if we take our line of sight from the equator, about there is perfect. The temperate zone, out there somewhere, that should be more or less perfect. There he is, still there. And if we come up to the North Pole, which is going to be about there somewhere, to focus on the spot, Yeah, line up there. So what you'll find is when you're looking at a distant point, at least relative to the size of the sphere that you've got, all the lines are parallel. Okay, so the reason I come to this place, this is the Vida Vus, just before a thunderstorm, uh, is because it's a very distinctive place, uh, just outside of Laramie and Cheyenne in Wyoming. And it's on an interstate that goes north-south for a couple of hundred miles. So what I need to do is measure a fixed point, which in my case is going to be Polaris, because it is a distant point um, which we know is a fixed position in space. And so if we measure it at two different latitudes, we can work out how big the Earth is. Now, in principle, you can do this with any star. It's just much, much easier to do it with the pole star, with Polaris. That's the one in this image that doesn't move. The whole sky apparently rotates around it. It's not, of course. The sky is entirely static. It's just the Earth that's spinning in the middle of it all. And it's just coincidence that we have a fairly bright star near the North Celestial Pole. All I'm going to do is measure the altitude of the pole star from two different latitudes. Well, according to the weather forecast, it's going to pass. Eh, we'll see. So on the first night, the thunderstorm did actually clear long enough for me to get a measurement of it, before the Earth spun quietly under the stars for the rest of the evening. And like I say, I chose a landmark that would be in both of these shots, so that's the Vidavus there. Then, with a bright, fresh, early start, you have to drive a few hundred miles or kilometres south, which meant driving past Denver, which I didn't think would be too bad, but turned out to be a complete nightmare for someone who is used to driving around on empty roads. So, several hours of driving later, you eventually arrive at the Great Sand Dunes in Colorado. They come to the Great Sand Dunes, the foothills, the Sangre de Cristos. And because nothing is ever easy, I'm now here in the Great Sand Dunes in Colorado where there are gazillions of mosquitoes, but nonetheless, yeah, nonetheless, it turns out it's actually quite hard to operate a few cameras in the dark and get good footage while being eaten by mosquitoes. So I don't know how actually you have any good footage of how I did the measurements here, apart from the time lapse where you can see me pointing the laser at the stars. 
So this was at the Great Sand Dunes, which yeah, I assure you are there, but they're kind of a little low in this picture. So how do I actually make these measurements? Well, a week or so later, I did actually get some nice video footage of how I did these measurements. So that's my spirit level. As you can see, it's quite level. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out the wide so that you can see how the hell I did these measurements. You get your piece of paper, who is now going to be level. So what you would do is you get your laser pointer, you get your elevation right, like that. And once you've got it right, you would get your marker pen and you just draw down both sides of the laser pointer and then you measure it up the next day. And in practice, it looks like this, with the star I'm pointing it at being Alderaan. <clears throat> Sorry, the star I'm pointing it at is Polaris, the uh, pole star, which is super easy to find once you can see the stars of the Big Dipper, in that you just take the bottom two stars of the Big Dipper and they always point towards the pole star, which, if you can see it, will always be due north. Okay, welcome to the back of my rental car, uh, where I occasionally sleep and also a laboratory for measuring the size of the Earth. Right, so previously we had our laser pointer and we were pointing it at the pole star and this was uh, this was laying flat, this was made level by a spirit level and then I would point the angle up such that I got the elevation right for the, the, the pole star. And the reason the lines are a little on the wide side for this is because they were being drawn with a fairly chunky marker but you know as long as they're parallel lines that should be good so we have the ones in blue are from when it was windy in laramie and then we drove south and when we got the red ones which is where it was absolute mosquito territory so what i've got to do is i've got to measure up uh, these angles for which i'm going to cheat and use a protractor so, uh, to make my life easier, I am going to get some parallel lines drawn on this thing. Line one, that's good. Parallel line two, super. Okay, let's measure up this blue guy first. And as you can see, we measure the angle fairly accurately. 40. Forty-one, forty-two and a half, forty-five, forty-four, forty-six, forty-seven, and a half, and that's sand dunes. <clears throat> okay, so those are all my numbers, and my spreadsheet assures me that the average of all of these is thirty-seven point two, and the average of all of these is forty-one point eight. Okay, so we have a difference of about 4.6 degrees. Yep. Now we need to know the distance that corresponds to going 4.6 degrees around the Earth. Okay, so we're going to work in kilometers. And we're going to set this to 200. It's only going to be approximate this. And our first point that we measured was just here in Laramie. And our second point was here in the Great Sand Dunes. And it's almost exactly 400 kilometers. Okay. So we know that we've got a sphere. And we know we've got two points on it. They're spread by about five degrees, and that's about 400 kilometers, that bit there. So how many of those slices do you need to go all the way around and multiply it by 400? And it turns out we need about 77 of these slices to go all the way around the Earth, and 77 times 400 is, according to the spreadsheet, 31,000 kilometers. 
which is definitely on the small side. Yeah, just so we're clear, the actual circumference of the Earth is about 40,000 kilometers. Now, you might think I'd be kind of upset and feel inferior and a failure in being about 10,000 kilometers off in the size of the Earth. But in reality, for less than $100, less than a day, and for using a high school protractor and a $10 bubble level, I'm actually pretty happy with that. You see, I can actually look up the cheat codes and find out what the actual answers are. My latitude for the Beedaboos is about half a degree high. Yeah, well, measured in the aftermath of a thunderstorm. And the latitude for the sand dunes was about half a degree low, while being eaten by mosquitoes. Put the correct numbers in, and of course, the size of the Earth comes out perfect. So how big is a half degree error in reality? Okay, for a perspective of angular sizes, the little finger at arm's length, which is about there somewhere covers about half a degree. That's big enough to cover the sun or the moon. The thumb is about a degree. All of your knuckles at arm's length is about five degrees, which is roughly, so that's roughly the difference in the height of the pole star between Beedaboos and sand dunes. And my error on both measurements was about the size of the little finger at arm's length, which under the circumstances, I'm actually pretty happy with. So if you want to know how latitude and the altitude of the pulsar are basically the same thing, I'm going to take a line here from 90 to 0. And that's going to be from the center of the Earth uh, going up north. And that's going to be... Okay, I've screwed it up slightly. Oh no, maybe not. There we go. And that's the equator, yeah? So your latitude is this angle here, yeah? That's your latitude. Um, so I'm in America at the moment, this is about 40 degrees. Um, and I also know that I've measured, right, your horizon is 90 degrees to the line to the center of the Earth. So that, is basically where my bubble level is when it's completely level is it's going to be there and my pole star is going to be up there somewhere so that angle is the one that i've measured now the simple way of doing this is to convince yourself these are the same is you just cut it out and you show yourself that they're the same the more sophisticated way of doing it is to just extend these such that they're parallel lines, right? Now, if you have parallel lines and a line that intersects them, that angle and that angle are the same, and that, well, these two angles are the same. These two angles are the same. That angle, that angle, that angle, and that angle are all the same. So you know that this angle here, because this is a, Two parallel lines intersected like that is the same. And let's do this in a different color, light pink. You know that that angle there and that angle there are the same, right? But you also know that this is 90 degrees, and you also know that this is 90 degrees. So if that's 90 degrees and that's your latitude, and this is 90 degrees and that's your latitude, and these two, these two angles are the same, then basically this angle here is this angle here. So basically by measuring the altitude of the pole star, you measure your latitude. Now, this is 100% uh, known to astronomers since forever, seeing as one of the mounts that we have is called the German Equatorial Mount. And the way that it works is one of your axes has to be aligned with the axis that the Earth spins on. So you have to set one of the axes of your telescope that rotates once per day to be parallel to the Earth's uh, axis of spinning. So, so, you know, if you're actually traveling around with a telescope, you have to adjust this angle, otherwise you don't track the stars properly. And what they look like in practice. The first is simple. One of the telescope's axes is parallel with the Earth's axis of rotation. And then it just rotates once per day around that axis 
And that's it. That's all you need to do. And in practice, they look like this, the German equatorial mount. So to set it up, all you got to do is align one of those axes parallel to the axis the Earth spins on, and you're basically done. Now, it turns out to do that about right ain't so difficult. But if you just want something that's roughly aligned, it's the simplest thing to set up ever. You just go outside, you point that axis due north with an elevation equal to your latitude, and boom, you're done. So yeah, you can quite happily measure the size of the Earth on your first go. I've literally never done this before in my life. This was me losing my virginity of this, but over 50 years old, uh, for less than $100, and less than a day, <laughs> using a little more than a high school protractor, and in the end, had errors of about, eh, plus or minus 25%. And if you want to prove the Earth is a sphere, it's trivial. You just do exactly the same measurement, but you go east-west, not north-south. And shock and horror, you will find that the altitude of the pole star doesn't change at all. Because the elevation of the pole star is basically your latitude. Hmm, if only there were a geometry, however. Spinning ball, say for instance, where the uh, elevation of a fixed a distant point changed as you went north-south but not east-west, which I was actually going to do on this trip by driving a few hundred miles west to the Black Canyon of the Gunnison. But the bridge was out, and it was a very long detour, so I put that one on hold. So if you're teachers or something traveling for a school trip, eh, why not add measuring the size of the Earth to the list? Or hell, if you're traveling for vacation, why not the same? After all, if you're going to live on a spinning rock your entire life, eh, it seems like measuring how big it is is something you should maybe do once in a lifetime. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Maybe.